Hey, it's Matthew McAllister here. Today I have a completely new technique exercise for you. It's all about scales. Probably you practice your scales quite regularly and you're hoping that your technique will get better by playing them over and over again. Sure, it might do, but it might take a long time. So I've got a really quick way, which is very efficient, to help you change your articulation when you practice your scales. Now what do I mean by that? Probably you practice scales a bit like this. So that was a simple major scale, ascending and descending, going straight across the fingerboard and back down, and everything was plucked. So I just plucked every single note and I alternated my right hand. You could do that I M, M A, I A. I don't really mind what the combination is. But there's nothing really challenging about that. After a few weeks of practicing your scales like that, they might get a bit faster, but nothing much happens, especially not much is gonna happen in the left hand. So watch this. Okay, so what I just did was I plucked the scale ascending, as we did every time. But when I get to the top of the scale, my last pluck, note seven, turns into the top and everything all the way down is slurred. So the scale descending is so now I'm mixing my articulations. So I'm practicing the scale but I'm practicing two completely different techniques and I'm really strengthening my left hand. So it's a mixture of hammering on and pulling off all the way down through the descent. Now I'm gonna get closer in with the camera so you can see my left hand up close. But just imagine this, you could do this anywhere on the fingerboard. It's really excellent for seeing how strong your left hand is, how much it can really start the note by hammering onto the string below and then quickly change to pull off. So you're asking quite a lot of your left hand. It really has to be very agile um, and have a really clear technique so that nothing's kind of muddy or fuzzy. Um, you can support it with a barre. So I've got my barre at finger four, or fret four. The barre is actually, some people might find it harder. I find it quite secure. Or with no barre. Okay, so let's get closer in so you can see this up close and I'll talk you through sort of in a micro analysis of how my left hand is working. Okay, so now you can see how super close in we are to my left hand and I'm gonna run through that scale again. So I'm plucking it as normal and this is ascending. That is my last plucked note, okay? My first hammer on happens with the second finger. So the top note of the scale pull off, 4-3-1, 4 4-2, 1-4-2. Okay, so completely different articulation on the way down. It really shows if you've got any sluggishness between finger four and finger three, if there's any little weakness there. Um, and it puts a lot of pressure on finger four to lead. So on the D send, here's finger four starting to lead. On the B string, on the G string, on the D string, back to the A string, and then finally. So you're really starting from the weakest point of your hand, your fourth finger, and you're really challenging that to lead all the way through the scale. Okay, good luck with that exercise. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. If you need me to clarify anything, just write a comment and I'll reply. Please don't try and run before you can walk. It's a difficult exercise. Playing in different articulations is a really fair representation of what we do when we play pieces of music. Pieces of music just don't go up and down the same way with scales. They change, there are slurs, there are different ways, 
of, of phrasing a melody. So you need to have a plucked technique and a slurred technique that's very flexible and you can go between the two very comfortably. So we even try it over one octave, not just the two that we just did. But uh, whatever you do, just persevere at it and it will come and it will really help with keeping that left hand as close to the fingerboard as possible and giving it a lot of strength. Good luck.